All right, guys, welcome back. Southeastern 14, Max Barr with me once again. And this is the time, Max, that everyone has been waiting for. Uh, we've teased it for months. Uh, many of you were very thrilled, I know, with our, our preseason or our summer power rankings <laughs> for the SEC. Uh, they, they've been adjusted a little bit because here's the difference. We'll go ahead and tell you up front. The difference is this is a full staff composite ranking. You guys know if you followed our football stuff, how we do it. All of our staff members put their individual rankings in and we give you our composite ranking, uh, just combining all the votes together to make the one through 14 list. So that is how we did it. And so Max, this should be an interesting exercise to see where all 14 teams landed here. I've been waiting for this one for months, for months. I can't wait, man. I mean, can you, can you believe it, Blake? I mean, the season is, is less than a week away. I mean, we're yeah. here. It's time. It, it is, and uh, it is also time for you to make bets. And if you want to do that, guess what, folks? You can do that with uh, our new sponsor here at Southeastern 14, our friends at Bet Online. Of course, the last of the major uh, pro sports leagues, the NBA, kicked off uh, last week, so it's in full swing. And, of course, Bet Online is your top spot for all of your NBA action this season. You want to follow your former favorite SEC basketball players in the NBA now? Go bet on them. Uh, at Bet Online, of course, MLB postseason still going on as we do this. Uh, NFL and college football, NHL in full swing now. Uh, Bet Online, your number one source for wagering news, odds, trends, and predictions. Uh, you can get everything NBA, as we mentioned, just at your fingertips with both the uh, desktop and mobile access uh, for every sport anytime you want it. Uh, so head over to Bet Online today, get in on the action, and don't forget use this promo code. Go ahead and write this down somewhere. Put it in your lock notes, Max, whatever you got to do. Write it it's down. It's got to be there. The promo code is BELIEF, B-L-E-A-V. That's all you need uh, to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Uh, bet online, of course, where the game starts. So, all right, here we go. And we are going to count these down from 14 to 1. We will, the way we're going to do this is Max and I will kind of tell you, okay, maybe we, we weren't going to spend a lot of time on some of these teams at the bottom, especially because we did spend a lot more time on those teams this summer. And if our opinion really hasn't changed, there's not a lot of need to really go into this again, but we will tell you, Hey, maybe we're a little higher on this team. Maybe we're a little lower on this team than the staff composite rankings wound up putting them. Uh, unfortunately, Max, not the case for one team because the staff uh, in a consensus ranking, I think, I think this was the only consensus ranking I'm looking at it now in terms of uh, yes, this was the only team that we all ranked the exact same. Mm. And yeah, it is South mm. Carolina who uh. winds up at number 14 in our preseason power rankings. Um, I've said, and a couple other things I've done, I don't know if you've said, I, I think this roster is better than the one they had last year. I'd agree. The problem is they just, I just don't know who you put them ahead of. So, yeah, I mean, um, I like Cooper coming in from Minnesota, might be able to open up the offense a little bit more, um, but they do lose some pieces. Um, I know some people are really excited about big BJ Mack coming in from Wofford. He, uh, you know, he's a great personality, um, but it's just, what do you put him in front of? That's the main, that's the main issue. Um, I couldn't personally put him in front of anyone, um, but they do have some talent. They do have some talent. They've got some guys from uh, uh, the Big Ten. Um, that have started multiple multiple seasons. So, you know, I could I see them uh, coming out of the bottom a little bit? Yes, um, but I just I couldn't put them in front of any one personally. No, just as a note, too, of course, uh, it seems like anytime we do this, there's always some technical issues. So we have some video issues on the side. You guys make sure to catch it on our podcast feed, uh, which you can find any podcast app you use there. But uh, all right, let's get to number 13. And number 13 is LSU. You and I were the same on LSU. We both had them ranked 13th uh, in our specific individual rankings. Uh, there was someone else that had them higher. Uh, so that was the only kind of difference we made. Chris actually had them higher. Not much, though. I think he had them at 12. So LSU, again, I think the roster's better. Um, I, I, I think the roster's better, but I don't think they have a KJ Williams, right? And so that's a little bit different there. But uh, I think they could have a little more scoring with Jordan right there now. And, of course... The problem, Max, with not knowing what to do with LSU, you don't know if Jalen Cook's playing still. Like, it's unbelievable we're doing this less than a week away from the start of the season have no idea if he's going to play. If he plays, 
I think I don't want to know if I'm going to call LSU the full on sleeper team like making the tournament, but they could be better than 13th. But I, we don't know. So yeah, I mean, I it's blowing my mind that we we still have multiple teams in a Power Five conference that don't even know who their players are going to be in one week. Um, don't even get me started on it. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I agree. I think this is this roster is better than last year. You know, Matt McMahon came in in his first year and uh, just basically brought his team over. You know, basically brought that Murray State team over. Um, so I think you have a bit more Power Five level talent with Damian Collins, with Will Baker, with Cook, with Wright. I think the team's improved. I, I would I would say that. Um, but just, I mean, you're potentially your leading scorer might not even be playing. I mean, so it's just. It's it's tough to move them up if we don't even know if, if Cook's playing. Yep, I think that's uh, there's nowhere else to put up my think until you know that. And so uh, these preseason rankings are <laughs> very fluid because it's like still, there are certain guys. Still, yeah, like there are certain guys who could get waivers, and that could change our opinions on teams. But we'll see. All right, number twelve is Georgia. Um, you and I also both had Georgia in the same spot. We both had them at twelve. I switched them around. I officially had them. I, it was really just 11 or 12 for me. That was probably as high as I was going to put them. Um, I think you could argue they could be a sleeper team. I just don't. It's sort of the same thing. I think they have a better overall roster than they had last year. Although, you know, maybe more dynamic scores on last year's team. But, you know, maybe it's just, again, more kind of well-rounded, balanced team this year. And Mike White's got some guys coming back that were part of that sort of resurgence last year. Remember, <laughs> I only won 16 games, but that was substantial like that's a significant yeah. development based on yeah. where they were the year before right so i i think at 12 again it's just i think they're going to be a, have a better roster i just don't think i can put them ahead of anyone else at this point so um not surprised to see georgia land here at 12 yeah yeah me too i mean we, we're, we've been aligned so far um but i will say out of these bottom three i think georgia has has a decent chance of, of proving me wrong um, and that's just because they're going to be big. They only have one guy on the whole roster under 6'5". Yeah. Oh, that's, and that's just Justin Hill, who's a, who's a true point guard. So, I mean, it's going to be tough to go to Georgia and play this team. Um, Mike White's going to have that classic defense that he usually has. Um, they've got some good freshmen. Um, while, while other teams down here have just kind of brought in a bunch of three stars, they brought in all four stars. So, you know, they've got some talent. They've got some size. Um, it's just hard to, to move them up with how, with how good this conference is this year. All right. Now begins, I think, the uh, the frustration from certain fan bases. I think this is where it, it really begins. Yes. Um, number 11 is Vanderbilt. And I think um, there are going to be differing opinions on Vanderbilt because, as we have said before, and just as we said in the preseason or preseason, the summer power ranks. I have to figure out, remind myself how to differentiate between the two. Yeah, We did say, look, I mean, Mignon coming back, Lawrence coming back, they are going to be as good as anybody there if those guys stay on the same sort of development cycle that they're on. And so, so yes, like that gives them something that can compete with every other team in the SEC probably for the most part, just having those two guys. But I think it, there are fair questions as to how the rest of the roster develops you and i are huge <laughs> on colin smith we think it's a breakout year for him still agree with that um and so as i always say i think jerry stackhouse gets the most out of his guys they may not be the highly touted recruits at, at every position like you're going to have with other teams but as we saw last year he gets the most out of what he has and maybe it's a team still that starts a little slow figures out some things uh but it, it is hard to put them here uh, overall and again you and i i think i'm looking at it here you and i were higher on them than others were uh in the staff rankings but still they wind up at 11th i look like i said i i, I say all that to tell you that i think they could be the sleeper team um but i i really do still want to see how everything comes around those guys that we've talked a lot about this summer yeah, uh, just the other night I was on a uh, show with Hoop Southbound, and my sleeper team was Vanderbilt. Yeah. Um, and that's just because you're going to see almost every uh, SEC preseason poll you're going to you're going to see is going to have Vanderbilt not in the top six. Pretty much everyone. Why? When they finished top six last year, um, and they just. 
they have the guys that when they start playing in January and February and it starts starting to click, I could be looking back at this video and being like, Max, you were an idiot. Why didn't you take a higher? Like that, this is the one team where I'm like, I could get a stack house bomb just slapped in my face midway through this, this season, just because I really like that, that trio of returning players with Lawrence Mannion and Colin Smith. And you build around that little trio there. Um, you know, you have Stackhouse work his magic and, and develop some players. And um, this team could be really a really tough team, um, really tough to guard with those with those guards. And it's just it's tough because because the league is so good this year, it's hard to move them up. But just I feel like I'm just gonna get butchered <laughs> midseason by Jerry Stackhouse. I can just I see it coming already. I I, I like this team as a sleeper team. Yeah, I'm with you. I I think they're certainly part of that category. And, you know, you always compare SEC schedules, too. They're worth noting, of course, Vanderbilt gets Tennessee twice. They get Kentucky twice. Um, You know, they get Florida twice. You know, and I think, you know, they get LSU twice. So that maybe could be a little bit of a break. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to see who else that I'm I'm missing that they get twice here. Um, Auburn twice. So, yeah, I mean, so so it'll be interesting to see, I think, scheduling-wise where they're at. By the time they get there, but yeah, I, this is one of my sleeper team picks. Of course, I can't always just limit myself to one. We know how this works, but yep, yep. Um, <laughs> I would put them as one of the ones in there for sure. So, Vanderbilt fans, send your send your frustrations elsewhere. Me and Max tried to pull up the vote; it just didn't happen from the full tried. staff rankings standpoint. So, okay, from one frustrated fan base to another here, because yep. I'm just going to go ahead and put this out there. I did not have this team here. I had this team several spots higher, but again, it is a staff composite ranking and the votes are tallied and we use a point system and this is where they fell. Um, and I'm trying to see how far difference they were. I was barely so on this team. Yeah. So, so there were only a couple points that separated them from moving up to the next spot, but still it's where they are. Missouri fans. Uh, you wind up at number <laughs> 10 in our staff composite rankings. Uh, I will just tell you, I wound up making a lot of swaps here. I put, I wound in, of course, every if Missouri fans are here, I did the one and a half, basically Sam Snelling and I talked for an hour and a half the other night on the rock M nation podcast and YouTube channel. And I kept telling him, I'm like, I haven't decided if I want to put Missouri at seventh or eighth. And I wound up putting them at eighth. And it's just, I still think they're an NCAA tournament team, but I put them as probably as the last team from the SEC to get in that mix. Um, and everyone knows too, I'm doing this as part of a tactic here, Max. I'm doing this because I don't want every, I, I'm doing the same thing I did last year where it's like, you know, I'm just going to let you guys know they're going to be better than you think, but Hey, I'll still rank them down here. I don't want anybody to fully buy in. Cause my man, Dennis Gates needs motivation. He needs some stuff to use for the bullets and more material. So I'm trying to give them some of that here. Although again, I did not have them at 10th. I had them several spots higher, uh, debated between seventh or eighth. But this is where they are. And I mean, do you want me to just reveal it, Max? You you, you were the low man on Missouri. I was, I was, staff I gonna, composite rankings. I'll wear it on my chest. <laughs> I'll wear it. You can attack me. I don't I attack Max. In my personal. Um and, and and here's why I like to I, I like to completely throw out what the actual standings were last year and focus more on the analytics. It just kind of paints a better picture of, of how the team was performing as a whole. Um, and last year, if you look at the Ken Palm standings for the SEC, Missouri was eighth. OK, so I know they had a really good year, but just how the numbers shook out, they were, were they were eighth on the computers. Um, and then if you ask me, do I think they're going to get better or worse this year? I think it's going to be maybe a little bit of the same analytically, just because I think the defense is going to get better because they have Van over, even though I know he might not be, you know, true SEC caliber. He's over seven foot. He's going to protect the rim a bit. Um, but I think that offense regresses coming back. You don't have these NBA level first round stars that, you know, can just kind of take over a game. So I think with the offense coming back and the defense kind of getting a little bit better, you might see a little bit of the same. So eighth might be might be a little bit more accurate, Blake. You might be a little bit closer to the closer to the actual rank, but 
Um, I just, I don't really love the guys they brought in. Um, I don't, I'm not a huge Tamar Bates fan. I'm not a huge Van Over fan. Um, I'm going to need to be, it's going to need to be a lot of Nick Honor. It's going to be a lot of Noah Carter. Um, if, th if those returning guys prove me wrong, give me all, give me all the heat you can give me. Um, but I'm just, compared to the other teams and who they brought in, I think uh, they just are just a step behind. But they won a lot of they won a lot of close games last year. Yeah, let's call yeah. it what it was. They were what eight and zero in games decided by whatever the, the the stat was. I've got it somewhere five points or less, maybe. Um, so sometimes that just comes back to the middle, and you know there are certain things like you said they may be better in some areas, maybe worse in some areas. Um, so that I agree that they're a hard team to figure out. I mean, I'm I not as see the argument for though. I, I yeah. understand the argument for. I can see the I can see the argument both ways. Like I, I could, yeah. um, but if, as always, I'm going to be the high man on yep. any Dennis Gates coach team. We all know that by now. So, uh, and I was in our staff composite ranking. So that is where Missouri lands. Uh, they will finish higher. Don't worry. Uh, all right, let's get to number nine here. Ole Miss. Um, you and I had Ole Miss. Everybody remembers we were all in on Ole Miss this summer, uh, and we did it as we said at the time with the thinking that everyone was going to be eligible. Yes. That is not going to be the case now. Um, based on everything I've heard, uh, very unlikely that um, the additional couple guys, of course, you know, Alan Flanagan is, um, seems unlikely that Brandon Murray and Musa Cisse are going to be. And so with that in mind, I think you have to take Ole Miss, you know, our, our excitement for him in the summer, take some back a notch here, trying to look here in terms of where we all had it. You, you of course, were still the high man on Ole yep. Miss. Um, oh, yeah, I'm going to be. Max had Ole Miss at six. And so you were the high man here. Everybody else kind of had him. Yeah, we all sort of had him around the same spot here at nine, 10, something like that. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I still think it's a Chris Beard coach team. Uh, you can say anything you want, obviously, you know, about the stuff that happened and everything. But the basketball product, you know, the guy wins everywhere he goes. And I think the roster is pretty good, even without those two guys. I'd like to see a little bit more of a scoring punch, perhaps, but. They're going to defend. They're going to win some ugly games. Um, and so I, I'm i fine with them being here at this spot. Yeah, I mean, this has been my uh, this has been my team all offseason. <laughs> um, and I'm just I'm just sticking to my guns here. I'm not backing out of this pick. Um, I like him to finish top half. Um, might be fringe top half, but I like him to finish top half. Um, they just lost to Houston by, like, four or five in a, in a, in a scrimmage. Uh, that's without CSA and without Murray. Um, it's just going to be a tough, it's going to be a tough team. I've, I've said a lot, but with, without those two, this is kind of what you like. You, this is what you're looking at with, with Ole Miss. You're looking at either Jalen Murray or TJ Caldwell, probably at point guard. But then after that, you got Matt Morrell, Alan Flanagan, Jamin Brakefield, Jamari and Sharp. That's as good as a four is, is you can get there. Um, and then if we get surprised by Rashad Marshall, who I've heard has great physicality as a freshman, um, maybe Rob Coward steps up. Um, and you can see just this is Texas Tech, you know, 2018, 2019, just slapped on Ole Miss. That's pretty much how I'm looking at it. It's just going to be a tough, hard-nosed team that doesn't score much but doesn't allow you to score much. And it, you don't want to go and play in Oxford and they grind out some wins finish middle of the conference and make the tournament. That's what I, that's what I got for my reps. They're going to win some rock fights for sure. Yeah. Um, they will be a rock fight team uh, in this league this season, okay. I think. So, all right, here's an interesting one. Cause I didn't, I was not sure where this team was going to wind up. And I thought this was one of the teams that I was most interested to see when we all put our rankings together, where they would wind up. And that's Mississippi state. Um, I, for me, it's, they are the hardest team to rank because you have to project when Tolu Smith comes back and you have to do all those kind of things. And it's really hard to do given what they've told us, right? There's just, there's no certainty on when he's coming back. It's using the hopeful he'll be back at this period in SEC yeah. play or whatever. And so I, it's just hard for me to like know exactly where to put them. I mean, I could, you know, if you, Let's say you knew you were going to have him coming back early in SEC play. He's just fine. He's the same player he's always been. Make an argument they may be the fifth best team in the league. Um, something like that wouldn't shock me at all. 
Uh, and so, but without him, I just, I need more of a sample size than just a, a scrimmage, an exhibition game, mm-hmm. uh, which I know, you know, we've got that, but I need more to just completely know what to expect. And so for lack of a better idea, I, I put them in this range. Um, we all had them around the spot, I think, uh, somewhere, you know, within a spot or two, I think of this. Yeah. I'm looking at everybody's now. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I just, I don't know what to do with him without Tolo Smith. It's, it's so hard to kind of gauge what they're going to be without him. So. Yeah. I mean, take me back like two, three weeks and I was loving this team. Loving. Like I had him up to like four in my rankings. Um, but you take out Tolu Smith and Kashawn Murphy, who's kind of, who's kind of breaking out this, this off season. He looked great in their uh, overseas exhibition big hit and it's just like you don't know like if if tolu smith comes back in you know january doesn't miss a beat just comes and is ready i could be thinking like okay yeah i definitely should have had him a little bit higher but what if it's like one of those like lingering injuries where he gets eased in 10 15 minutes a game he's not really playing until mid-february you know then it's like oh geez well maybe i should have moved him back the one thing that's keeping me i had them at uh i had them at sixth personally And the one thing that is kind of keeping me, you know, believing in in Mississippi State is just the fact that they added Jimmy Bell Jr. Uh, If they didn't have Jimmy Bell, then it would be like, oh, boy, we got to start like either Guy Troll or Quan Scott or something. The questions start turning. But having Jimmy Bell, who just played a season in the Big 12 with West Virginia, um, that's a huge, huge boost for an injury ridden front court. So I think they'll be able to get by. I think uh some added minutes might even help this team down the road, like playing Josh Hubbard a bit more, playing Trey Fort and Adrian Myers a bit more. If everything comes together, this team could really be good. It's just, I mean, it's hard to it's hard to predict the injury recovery time. Yeah, foot injury for a big guy and being labeled out it definitely is never something you want to hear. It's just yeah, um, it's recipe for disaster. So, yeah, we'll see. All right. Speaking of teams that have high expectations, uh, Max, the high man on this team, too, the Florida yep. Gators. It's seven. Um, for reference, I had them at seven. So, uh, but Max, you had them at five. And I think we may have talked about this. I've mentioned on other things. People kind of ask me if you take this middle of the pack in the SEC, all these teams that you kind of feel like maybe are jumbled together and you don't know how to order them, which team has maybe the highest upside? I've said Florida a lot of times, um, and I think that's true because you and I have talked about the backcourt, just the perimeter play should be fantastic. Riley Kugel, Will Richard, Clayton, um, you know, Zion Pullins there. That's a lot to work with. And then it's just really, to me, seeing how the front court evolves. I, I, I feel even better by the day when it comes to Tyree Samuel. I just, I'm all in on him being a big, you know, time guy they can use as just a physical guy coming from the Big East, um, you know, battling against these SEC guys. And so this is the year I think Florida takes this big step forward. It's just, you know, do they wind up here at seven? Or are they a team that kind of crashes the party, maybe makes the top four or five in the SEC? Yeah, I mean, when did we – we did our Florida preview just a little while ago, and I was real scared after the EJ Jarvis departure, and I've kind of toned back on that. After I've seen how much Alex Condon has has been doing work – um, 6'11 freshman. Um, he's been, he looks great right now. Um, and if they play, if they play him and Samuel and, and Han Lopton as kind of like a rotating three man, uh, you know, three man conglomerate at the four and the five, um, man, I could be like, wow, this team is good. I've set it all off season. I, I think this team is going to be like an FAU Miami where you have those four really good guards and then one big, They've got a lot of options. Um, I love the shooting. I don't think there's going to be a better shooting team in the conference between Clayton Kugel and uh, Richard. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, this is this is on Todd Golden. A lot of people like Todd Golden as a little uh, flyer pick for coach of the year. Um, a lot of potential. You, you nailed it on that. A lot of, lot of upside with this team. All right. So, as I said on Twitter, this I am a little surprised that the next – two teams are ordered the way they ordered in because I expected another order here. Uh, but Max, again, disrupting my ranking here. wild. Uh, he, he disrupted the, what I thought was going to be the ranking <laughs> here. And, and we'll explain why in a second. 
But we'll just actually here's what we're gonna do, Max. We will group these two teams together. Okay. Um, because you kind of have to make them as part of the conversation. Alabama winds up at six, which means, as I teased on Twitter, there was only two teams in the entire 14-team vote here. And like we said, we did a point system. Only two teams in the whole thing were separated by one point. And, of course, it's Alabama and Auburn. Um, Auburn winds up at five. Alabama winds up at six. And that's because, Max, you have Auburn ranked at fourth going into the season. and. Listen, I, I'm a big Bruce Pearl guy. Everybody knows this. Uh, just ask the Alabama fans. Um, but I did not have him fourth. I, I could give you an argument as to why that could happen. Uh, but these are probably, though, I will say, and I'm not just saying this to add to the closeness of the ranking, but these are the two teams that I probably have flipped the most this offseason in terms of I, I've always had them right together for me um, <clears throat> in terms of having – Alabama, Auburn, maybe at like four, five, five, six, something like that. <clears throat> but ultimately, wound up putting Alabama ahead of Auburn. And the reason that this is the way it is is not just that Max has Auburn at four; it's where you have Alabama, which is significantly lower than anyone else has Alabama. Which, if you watch the summer power rankings video, you will know that that is not a new development. Um, we have mentioned. Again, I, I, I think come around on Alabama more so than I was this summer. But we have mentioned, I think the defensive issues are a fair ask in terms of waiting to see what they look like defensively. Um, it's just, it's a different team than the one they had a year ago. I don't think it has the, doesn't have the ceiling that that team had. And I don't think that's, you know, being unrealistic. I think it's just obvious, probably just based on the roster. And so, this is an interesting couple teams, though, and not just because they're it's Alabama and Auburn, but um, things you can pick apart on both. But again, you were you were the high man on Auburn, you were the very very low man on Alabama, and this is how it winds up: uh, Auburn five, Alabama six. Yeah, I'm. Uh, this is where I'm going to take most of my heat. Um, I'm going to take heat all over these rankings because I'm a. I, they are they're all over the place. Um, but I just, I'm not a huge fan of Alabama this year. Uh, I've said it all off season. I'm still not coming around on them. They haven't looked good in their exhibitions. They don't have Mark Sears right now. Who's a huge piece, huge piece. Um, but still they, they haven't changed. They haven't done anything to change my opinion. Um, they're going to be heavily reliant on two mid-major transfers who, yes, they were very good. Um, but they're going to be asking them to be their, their stars. Um, and Grant Nelson and Aaron Estrada. Um, so if this team, which I think Nate Oates thought he was going to have, if they had Charles Bediaco anchoring the the paint, one of the best rim protectors in the country, and they had uh, Quinn Early, who, while yes, has probably made some uh, over-dribbling plays and, you know, shot it when he shouldn't supposed to shoot it, he was still one of their – best players, you know, down the stretch last year. Um, you take both of those guys out and now just, you have Nick Pringle starting. Um, Jaron Stevenson, the freshman might get some minutes. You got some other freshmen with Walters and, and Diabate and Mo Wag didn't play much last year. It's just like, I don't know. I'm not seeing the, I'm not seeing the pop. Um, I think this team's going to have to go off offensively, like every game. Um, because, I mean, I mean, say Grant Nelson gets in a little bit of foul trouble. That front court looks to me. Um, so that's just why. I just uh, – I don't think – I think they uh, they expected to have some guys they don't have. I think the defense is going to take a huge step back. Um, and you're just – you're reliant on huge seasons from Estrada and Nelson that we don't know if we're going to get. So that's why I'm just – Got my questions on Alabama. Yep. If you want to find our, our full team previews, we did for both Alabama and Auburn. You can see what uh, we thought of each team. You can find those on the channel and figure it out there. Yeah, Alabama, the high vote for Alabama was four, uh, and the high vote for Auburn was max at four. So um, there you go. So that's where they're at. All right. We got another interesting discussion coming up this here. Gonna be if, if you thought the Alabama discussion was disrespectful, Wait until you hear this one. 
Texas A&M is number four, and this isn't not A&M at four. I think there's nothing to be that upset about if you're an A&M fan um, being at four. Although I will say the high vote for Texas A&M in our composite staff rankings, number one. Um, Chris voted them. Chris voted them as the number one team in the league. Someone else did not vote them as the number one team in the league. Uh, just for reference, uh, I had A&M at three, which again I've not changed on uh, my my top. Five, six has not changed, period. Maybe my top seven has not changed throughout the summer. So maybe it's, um, you know, think whatever you want of that. But I have not really changed my opinion on teams throughout this process of researching them more and more. So, all right. <laughs> Again, a and gets a regular season championship vote by someone. They also get uh, a ninth place vote by someone else. Who, who, who might that be, Max? All right, listen. Listen. I'm going to mute my mic here. I'm just going to sit back. I don't think anyone in the country has Texas A&M as low as I do. I I think think you're right about that. I'm I'm the lowest (laughs) on them as anyone. I do not like this team at all. Now, let me me give you my reasoning. I told you how I like the, the analytics to look at teams from last year. I know they finished second in the conference. I know. But if you look at the analytics, they were 33rd in the country on Ken Palm, which puts them at 6th in the SEC, okay? They had the 34th offense, 44th defense. So they're, you know, pretty pretty balanced. Um, they had a lot of defensive success because the SEC could not shoot at all. And uh, we saw that get very exposed uh, in the conference championship when Alabama ran them out of the building and then when Penn State ran them out of the building. It was two bad blowouts. Um, So now you take that team and let's see how they improved or did not improve this year. No Dexter Dennis, which I think is massive. Tied for the lead on the team in rebounds. He was their best wing defender and he would be able to stretch the floor offensively and knock down threes. Huge loss in him. Now you take out of the equation Julius Marble, maybe. And now they said this is a university process. That's how they're describing it with no timetable for return. So that's weird. That's like, that's telling me like it's probably some academic, in a, you know, academic issue with, you know, maybe credits or something's going on that's keeping him out. Um, now, if he's, if Marble's playing, um, probably bumped him up a few spots. But you don't really bring anyone in. You bring in Jace Carter, Eli Lawrence, a big man from UMass that didn't play much. So do I think that's an upgrade at the wing from Dexter Dennis? No, I don't. Do I think they upgrade at center at all after losing Marble? No, I don't. So I think this team's going to get worse than last year. So if they were sixth in the on the computer rankings in the conference, and I think the SEC got better as a whole, shooting and just overall they would crush the portal rankings so if i think the conference is getting better i think texas a&m is getting worse and i think they're a little bit overrated by the way they finished on the real standings compared to what the computer said take all those things into consideration and i'm like wow like this team might be more toward around like 40th 50th on ken palm next year and i'm like okay i don't like this team at all so you're looking at the starting five here and the tough non-con they have. I mean, you're looking at Wade Taylor and Boots Radford. There you go. After that, it's like Henry Coleman's going to be at the five, maybe some Solomon Washington, some Anderson Garcia, some Jace Carter. I mean, how's this team any better than Vanderbilt? You know, I mean, Vanderbilt's got two guards and we don't really know much after. It's kind of what I'm seeing from Texas A&M is they got two guards and kind of a little bit of question marks after now that Marvel's out. So I know some people are, obviously Chris loves them. I know a bunch of other people have them top three and everything, but I just, I, I don't see it. I just, I don't see it at all. All right. Well, if you're listening to this on the podcast feed, you're not watching this on YouTube, you don't get the luxury of this next uh, part here. But uh, just for me to put this on the screen of Buzz Williams, just holding his hands out, asking Max, Max, come on, Max, Max. Hey, I'm sorry. I know you got two great guards, but the rest of the team just looks lit to me right now, especially with Marble out, especially with Marble out. All right, let's move to the top three. 
And this is where we start with Kentucky. Um, the Cats get here, uh, I think, trying to see here. Actually, Matt, yeah, you, you were the high man on Kentucky, too. Um, no, actually, there was nothing. We had a couple, three, number three votes for Kentucky. But uh, they wind up here at three. I mean, again, not a stunning development by any means. I think Kentucky, probably a pretty consensus top four, five team in the SEC. I can't imagine anyone's picking them. Beyond that, um, again, we, we did a full team. We're kind of getting to the teams now where, look, we didn't get around to getting a chance to preview every single team. We did our best. Schedules just didn't work out. But we're getting to the teams now where if you want our full 30-plus minute discussion on these teams, you can find them on the channel. So you can find our Kentucky season preview on there. Any additional thoughts on Kentucky, Max, in terms of, you know, maybe what you've changed since we've done that? That's been about a month ago. Um, but – I mean, to me, it's the same thing. I, I think this is one of Cal's better teams on paper. I think it could be one of his better shooting teams he's had. Um, but I still, uh, I hope Aaron Bradshaw's foot injury, again, big man foot injury, fully heals if he does. Uh, there's a lot to like about this team. Yeah, I mean, just uh, but on the over for the, fir for the, for the first few <laughs> games on this team. I mean, they're not going to have much rim protection, but they're going to be fast. Um uh, the only thing I want to say is we said that we didn't think uh, Big Z, Zvonimir Ivasic, was going to be on the team. Um, he is. Now he's just going through yeah. some final eligibility issues. So that, that gives him some some help. Um, I just want to say Reed Shepard is is better than you think. I'll just leave it at oh, that. Yeah. I'll leave it at that. He's he's going to be, yes, like I said. And that's why I think one of the reasons why they'll, it'll be one of the better shooting teams he's had. Um, yeah. So, yeah, and again, I know we're kind of getting a little lighter on these teams at the front, but remember, this is why – the reason we're doing this is because you guys have heard us talk about these teams 30 minutes each uh, for yeah. most of these top-tier teams already. So we won't go too much into that. You have other resources to find on the channel to get that. All right, here is was the debate. Who was going to wind up one? Who was going to wind up two? And I'm looking at our rankings here. This is the order we all had them in, aside from, as I mentioned, um, yeah, everyone on our staff had this had these two teams in the same order, even if it was in different spots, which we mentioned earlier, one of the reasons why AM got a first place vote too. Number two is Arkansas. And that means number one is Tennessee. So they wound up, you know, being right there together, bunched together. Uh, Tennessee gets the most votes uh, by virtue of getting multiple first place votes, which they came, you know, you and I pay, both picked Tennessee to win the league. You and I both picked Arkansas second. Um, there was some difference elsewhere, but like I said, these two teams were grouped together uh, in everyone's uh, individual ranking. So, I mean, look, I, I don't, I, I'm still just, you know, and I'm not just saying this because the Dalton Connect highlight reel uh, thing against Michigan State, but like my opinion on Tennessee hasn't changed. I think they're going to be better offensively. I think, you know, they're going to go one through 10. Jordan Ganey, you know, obviously also, has also showed some things early here. I just love this team. I think there's a lot to like. And if they get Ziegler back, you know, at some point, which I do think is important, I think they do need to get him back healthy, ready to go. Just don't know when that's going to be. Um, you know, that's the difference maybe in a, a Final Four type run. And everybody can make the jokes all they want about, you know, the Barnes and NCAA tournament success. But we just, if you're making a preseason ranking, in my opinion, you go on what you have now and where teams are roster wise. And this is why, to me, I think Tennessee has the best roster. Um, but I don't think Arkansas is very far behind. And I know people pointed out, well, you, you know, you could kind of say Arkansas is a team that felt like a top three team last year, but they weren't, right? I mean, they wind up going eight and 10 in the league. Um, I don't see it. And, and I think the difference is one of the things you pointed out this summer, and this is why I continue to probably be higher and higher on Arkansas, is just the experience. This is a more experienced team. I think it's a team that connects better in terms of the skill sets that they have. Um, and I mean, again, if you want to go off the exhibition game against Purdue, sure, there's a lot to like coming out of that, but I'm not going to put everything on that. But there were some very encouraging things coming out of it, in turn, and including to me, Chandler Lawson, who we barely mentioned in our Arkansas preview because we didn't know, you know, for starters, you know, you just never know, right? Like, you don't know what that minute distribution and all that's going to be, but um, Leaf Battle looked good. I mean, there's, I think Arkansas, like I said, to me is. You can go find our entire video on Arkansas, but um, I have not changed my opinion on these two teams. I think they're the two best teams in the league. I could switch the order and be fine with it, but ultimately I put Tennessee at one. 
yeah, in a in a green sphere. Um, there were some people out there this off season that said Arkansas didn't have shooting. Hope that hope that cleared things up already. <laughs> they added shooting. Um, I just the difference between Tennessee and Arkansas for me is just Tennessee has that top five defense that ain't going nowhere. That it's just it's so solid. Don't connect might might be first team all SEC. I'll overreact. I'm buying into I'll buy into all that exhibition hype right now. You caught me. Hook, line, and sinker, you caught me. <laughs> I mean, they didn't have Zakai Ziegler or Santiago Vescovi, and they looked great. They looked so good. I mean the depth at guard is is something that not a lot of other teams have. And like say Arkansas, you know, they bring in Laden Blocker, you know, they'll bring in uh, maybe Battle off the bench, you know, some guys with some pop. Tennessee has like starters on the bench. Mayshack is one of the best def- guard defenders in the country. You know, Ganey's a sniper. He might start over uh, Freddie Dillion, my guy, this, this, this year. Like, it's just, they have like two starting lineups, Tennessee. Um, I think they're the best team in the country overall. So, yeah, I think they're the best in the SEC. <laughs> no. There you go. Um, like I said, I, I if we go by tiers, to me, I think I would put the top four in a different tier. Um, you know, and that that for me would include Tennessee, Arkansas, and M, Kentucky. And then I think I, I've said before, I, I think I'm to me Alabama or Auburn. One of those teams is gonna they're gonna make their way into like the top three. I just don't I don't know which one's gonna be. Um, which if you want to go historical recent trends that suggest Alabama will find a way to get there. Um, but we'll see if that happens. Uh, and then I think you've got a bunch of other teams and this is where we're going to make these picks real quick, Max, because I put this out on Twitter uh, for people to kind of give their thoughts on, you know, a couple different categories. And, and I just kind of threw these together very quickly. Obviously we saw a regular season champion. We both are picking Tennessee yep. as the regular season champion player of the year. You want me to go this? first? Go first. I'll, I'll get here's here's what I want from you. I want one choice for your actual, you know, maybe I don't want to call it obvious choice, but if you have to just make an obvious choice for player, and then I want one guy that you think could get there that is not getting that type of hype right now. Okay, I like that. I like that. Um, player of the year for me is Janai Broom. Okay, um, just the the pure numbers he's going to put up and the role that he's going to play for this team. Um, I think he could have, he was in the conversation last year. Um, I just think he keeps getting better. Um, I thought he was going to go to the NBA. I think he's an NBA player playing in college right now. Um, so that's why I have Janai Broom. I know Riley Kugel is going to get a lot of, uh, a lot of, you know, shouts and stuff like, oh, sleeper Riley Kugel. Um, I think that, I don't know if he's going to be able to put up like, the sheer numbers, like for a guard to win player of the year, like it's got to be like, you know, like 17 points per game plus. And, yeah. and with, with the amount of talent that Florida has, there's a lot of mouths to feed there. So Google might play at the level of a player of the year stuff. But I don't know if his numbers are going to necessarily over the stretch of the season, he'll have his big games and stuff. But I don't know if he's going to be able to match what Broom. I mean, Broom might have a double, double every single game this year. I feel like, um, so I love, I just love Broom's numbers and the output that he's going to have. Um, and then for a sleeper pick, I just mentioned him, but Dolan Connect, I think he's going to be the, the, the top scorer on the top team. And so that, that holds a lot of, that holds a lot of weight in its own. Um, if he's scoring like what I think he might be scoring, like 14, 15 points a game, and he's on the best team in the country. Be hard not to, to have him in the, in the conversation. All right, so I'm changing my SEC preseason player of the year pick. Um, someone asked me a couple of weeks ago who I'd pick. I picked Wade Taylor. I'm changing it on this video, uh, which I think I would put Wade Taylor too. But I'm changing it to Janai Broom. <laughs> hey! I, I wasn't. I didn't know that he would get the complete sweep for us. But I, it's because of what you said. If you just if you think of this as a statistical yeah. thing, I think he will have the most impressive stats in the league. Yep, that's um, what I think too. And so I'm going to go with him because I think th- there's probably less room for that to be wrong um, because of the numbers that he'll put up, yeah. even though there are a lot of great options, whether it's Wade Taylor, whether it's Justin Edwards for me, I think is also in that mix. You could go with Vescovy. Um, 
you know, you can go with all those kind of guys, right? And I know I haven't mentioned everybody. You know, Toulouse Smith, if he's back and ready to go by the start of SEC play, then boom, he catapults to the top two, right with Broom, which we I think we kind of talked this summer. He could easily go 1A, 1B on those two being the two best players in terms of the impact they have. Um, so I'm actually going to go that route too. I'm going to I'm gonna pick Janai Broom as my SEC preseason player of the year. Um, and maybe I'm just trying to switch it up a bit because I'm like, I've been talking about Wade Taylor all summer. So uh, but I, I'll, I'll put Wade Taylor, like I said, right there too. But I'm going to switch it up actually based on the numbers. The sleeper pick, and I don't know if you would necessarily class this, classify this as a sleeper pick, but if I'm looking at the teams that I have ranked the highest, um, I'm going to go Trevor Brazil as the, uh-huh. the sleeper pick to win SEC player of the year. Uh, I almost went with our guy, Tremont Mark, which by the way, I can't, we can't get out of here without mentioning how good he looked in the exhibition game, but um, I'm going to go Trevor Brazil. I think that he could very well. And that's the problem. I think it's Arkansas so deep that he may yeah. not have the numbers to support it, but I'll, I'll take him as maybe a little bit longer of a shot, even though to me, he's a first team all SEC player. So I don't know that he's a true long shot. Um, so I'm going to go Brazil as my kind of sleeper pick, uh, perhaps if you want to call it that uh, to that extent. All right. Next up, this is the tough one. This is the one where, you know, we all know my bias could show here, and I'm going to try to be unbiased because, you know, it's one where, you know, I've kind of got to make this selection, and we all know it's SEC Coach of the Year. Um, who is going to win SEC Coach of the Year? I'm going to I'm gonna go the, 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 the cop-out route, and I'm just going to pick the best team. I think Rick Barnes wins Coach of the Year. I think they're going to be absolutely like when I say I think they're the best team in the country. Like I like overall, I think they're going to be like number one team in the country. Um, so that's why I'll say I'll say Rick Barnes just because. I mean, I don't I don't think they lose a game at home. Like they're just they're going to be a gauntlet. Um, but if I had to go a more like a a team that's going to over like really overperform, you know, and and have a have a great year that where the coach needs to be recognized, I would say. Uh, Coach Cal, if I'm being honest, because yeah. he's got the, just the pure coaching job that he's going to do this this year with all these freshmen and all the offseason doubters and haters of Cal's doesn't got it anymore. He can't recruit him, all this stuff. If he turns out a great season, a top three SEC season, and he's got these freshmen on the first team and, and all this, it'd be hard not to give him an award. Yeah. I agree. Uh, I'm going to, if it's not Dennis Gates, which I have to contractually give it to Dennis Gates for Missouri fans. But again, we're blaming Max for why they rank so low. But uh, if it's not Dennis Gates, I'm also going to go with the cop out answer. I'm going to go Rick Barnes because I think um, if they're the number one team, it doesn't always happen that way. You have a, you know, kind of last year buzz winning it and Stackhouse was co. And I think that was deserved. Although, I still think Dennis Gates should have been. Um, if you're going to do a co, it, to me, he had to be in there. But that is a discussion for another day. Um, I'm going to go Rick Barnes too because I think Tennessee could be that good. So, yep. all right, sleeper team. I'm making us do this. We have to pick one, just one sleeper team. It's hard to do, but I, we have. I'm going to try to figure this out. But we got to pick one. I'm going to I'm going to stay true to my uh, straight stay true to my guns. I picked this team uh, the other night with uh, Hoop Southbound, and that's that's Vandy. All right. Um, just because I don't see another team that has like the immediate star power that can just slap me across the face and be like, you were stupid <laughs> like that. I just, I, I'm almost expecting it at this point. Like I can, <laughs> I'm, I'm just ready for it. Um, yeah. just the, the star power that they have at guard, um, they can win games on their own, control the pace of the game, uh, play at Bandy's tempo. Um, Colin Smith bangs a few threes a game and, and you're looking at a really good team. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to go Vandy. Vandy can definitely make me look bad. Because I have Missouri in the NCAA tournament, I'm not going to classify them as a sleeper team. Although I think most people would, uh, I want to go Vandy as well too, because I begin to have them lower. So, or that's where they wind up too in our composite ranking. So I'm going to go Vanderbilt. Like I said, I think Jerry Stackhouse gets the most out of what he has. At least he, you know, that's been the trend. And so if he does it again, um, we're all going to be looking up saying, up oh, that again, that they're the new South Carolina under Frank Martin for a while there, where it was, they got picked low every year. They wound up surprising. Maybe that becomes Vanderbilt where they're just every year. You're like, oh, why do we keep doing this? Um, so yeah, I'm going to go Vanderbilt for my sleeper team too. And then we wrap up how many SEC teams make the NCAA tournament. Someone asked me if we set the number at eight and a half, I said under, um, I just, I think I would go eight 
as my pick because I think that's the safest answer. I could see the argument for nine, but I think eight's the safer pick. Yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go eight. But if one of if one of Vandy, Mizzou, Georgia, LSU, South Carolina, if one of them really outperform and and, and make the tournament, I I bump it to nine. Um, yeah. So I think eight and a half is a great line. Whoever gave you that line, <laughs> that's a, that's a solid line. That's a no bet from me. That's a no yeah. bet from me. No bet. It was not our friends at Bet Online, but uh, someone gave me that. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna be the move safe pick. I'm gonna pick eight. So, anyways, all right, there you go. There was our full uh, SEC basketball preseason power rankings of the 23-24 season with a couple uh, picks at the end there for player of the year, coach of the year, sleeper team, and how many teams make the tournament. Uh, but Max, we got a lot more stuff to come because now yeah. we're not just doing this every now and then we're doing this all the time here at Southeastern 14, uh, constant sec basketball coverage season kicks off on Monday. And, uh, yeah, we will have a lot of fun stuff, uh, to talk about as we head into that. So be sure to hit that subscribe button. Um, you can follow Max on Twitter, follow me on Twitter, um, for all the stuff. Cause again, we're going to be doing a lot more stuff here on the channel. And so uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And again, check us out. Any podcast app you use, search for Southeastern 14. You can find us there. Like I mentioned, I know we had a couple video hiccups today. So just listen as a podcast. That's a luxury of YouTube. You don't necessarily have to watch us for the entire time. You can listen. And uh, you can also find us, like I said, any podcast app you use there. So for Max Barr, um, another great discussion here on SEC Basketball. Those are our SEC preseason rankings. And... We will be back soon here on Southeastern 14 with more SEC basketball content. So be sure to subscribe, hit the like button as well. Thanks as always for supporting the channel. And uh, we will talk to you again here soon at Southeastern 14, 14 presented by 